What's up, Internet? It's your boy, Professor Django. As you might have seen on some of our other videos, Yoda Bauer and I are about to start a big undertaking as we make our way through the New Jedi Order, a 19-book series set in the Legends canon 20 years after the events of Return of the Jedi. And in case you've never read the entire series, or, like me, haven't read it in 15 years, here's a quick list of everything you need to know before the NJO. And of course, there will be spoilers in this video, but I'll try to keep them to a minimum and list plenty of references in the description for where you can find more details about all of these things. And today, I'm going into full professor mode to tell you everything you need to know before the New Jedi Order. And we'll start with number one, what happened to the Empire? If you start reading the NJO without having read any of the other Legends canon novels prior to the first one, Vector Prime, you may find yourself wondering, where's the Empire? Did they just go away after the second Death Star was destroyed? In short, absolutely not. After the death of Emperor and Vader, the Empire was thrown into complete disarray with many ships and admirals deserting to the New Republic, others declaring themselves as warlords, and others still trying to hold together what was left of the Empire at the time. Some of the books set right after Return of the Jedi, in particular books like Truce at Bakura and the first arcs of the X-Wing series of books, show the continuing fight against what becomes known as the Imperial Remnant. The New Republic eventually captures Coruscant and sets up a new government there, but the Empire doesn't just go away. However, it does flounder for a while until the Thrawn Trilogy. Five years after Jedi, a previously unknown Grand Admiral known simply as Thrawn takes command of the Imperial forces, even expanding his armada through capturing a long lost fleet of ships and the use of an old cloning facility hidden away by Emperor Palpatine. Thrawn was a military mastermind and an incredible tactician, able to use a study of art and culture to accurately predict and counter other military commanders. Over the course of this three book series by Timothy Zahn, Thrawn is able to go on the offensive with the Imperial Remnant and make the Empire a real threat to the New Republic again. I won't spoil many of the other details, but suffice it to say that the series doesn't end well for Grand Admiral Thrawn. And actually, by the time of the NJO, the New Republic has actually made peace with the Empire. There are a lot of really good books that I'm glossing over at this point that fill up the intervening 15 years between Thrawn and the NJO, including the Hand of Thrawn duology. But by the time of the NJO, the New Republic has actually signed a peace treaty with the Imperial Remnant that basically allows the New Republic to be the dominant government in the galaxy, but still leaves the Empire with a significant portion of galactic territory of their own. This won't be super important early in the NJO, but will come into play later on. In the meantime, let's also find out what's been going on with our heroes. Let's start with the Solo family. We already know from the original trilogy that Han and Leia love each other, even if they have a hard time saying so to each other at the same point in time. I love you. I know. Their love story continues, and we even see their wedding in the courtship of Princess Leia. And by the time of the aforementioned Thrawn trilogy, we even see them start their family with the birth of their twins and later on expand it with a third son. This entire family, as you would imagine, is super important in the NJO. Han and Leia's firstborn son is Jason, along with his twin sister Jaina, and their younger brother Anakin, named after Luke and Leia's father. All three children are force sensitive and work towards becoming Jedi themselves. In the meantime, Leia focuses all of her attention not on her own Jedi training, but on the government of the New Republic, serving as leader of the new government council and even serving as head of state for a period of time before eventually leaving the government formally to serve more of a diplomatic role that she's in by the time of the NJO. Meanwhile, her brother Luke spends a lot of time reestablishing the Jedi Order. We know that by the time of the Return of the Jedi, the galaxy has been reduced to Luke being the single remaining member of the Jedi Order. After struggling with his own path for a while and seeking guidance from other Force users, <coughs> even a cloned Emperor Palpatine, Luke finally gets busy re-establishing the Jedi Order and creating a new Jedi Academy on Yavin 4. There are a whole series of books that feature the rise of this new order and the Jedi that serve alongside Luke and study at the Academy, including the Solo Children. There are over a hundred Jedi in the galaxy by the time of the NJO, but they are still a pretty loosely structured order, and that becomes an important plot line in the NJO. Some of these characters, especially Jedi like Corrin Horn and Kip Durin, are featured in books of their own, where you can see their own, sometimes perilous, 
journeys to the Force, and many of them are important characters in the NJO. And while Luke is busy reestablishing the Jedi Order, Luke is also getting busy with Mara Jade. Mara is one of the most important of our cast of characters by the time of the new Jedi Order. We first see her in the Thrawn trilogy where she is working for a smuggling group. We later learn that she was a former servant of Palpatine known as the Hand of the Emperor and blame Luke Skywalker for the Emperor's death. When we first meet her, the one thing she wants most in life is to kill Luke and avenge her former master. Over time, though, we see her not only give up on her mission of murder, but she and Luke fall in love and even get married just a few years before the beginning of the NJO. Mara is also Force-sensitive and becomes a Jedi alongside Luke, serving and teaching in his new Jedi Academy and becoming the personal teacher and mentor to Jaina Solo. Number 7, Rogue Squadron. Another cast of characters that are important to the story of the NJO are the members of Rogue Squadron. From the beginning, Star Wars has always featured fighter pilot characters, and the NJO is no different in this regard. There is a whole series of novels focused just on these characters and their stories as they work to fight against the ongoing threat of the Empire after Return of the Jedi. Familiar faces like Wedge, Hobby, and Jansen, as well as new characters like Tycho Kelchu, Corrin Horn, and Gavin Darklighter, son of Luke's childhood friend Biggs. All of their stories are great and tell us many important things that happen in the two decades after the destruction of the second Death Star. However, by the time of the NJO, many of these characters have gone into retirement and the squadron is being led by Gavin. Knowing that the squadron still exists and who Gavin is will be enough for you to understand the gist as you start into the NJO, and the series will fill you in on the specifics. But as with all of this, I encourage you to go back and read more just because these stories are a lot of fun. Number 8. Politics The last thing I want to mention to you is the state of galactic politics in the New Republic. Before you get too far into the NJO, you'll be confronted by the inner workings of the government, and those play out in important ways as you go through the series. However, the quick version is that the New Republic reestablished itself as the formal government for the galaxy after Return of the Jedi, eventually setting up shop on Coruscant as well. The New Republic is governed largely by their Senate, led by a small governing council and a chief of state. Initially, that chief of state was Mon Mothma, leader of the Rebellion, but Leia also took her turn at the helm before we get to the NJO. By the time of this series, a Bothan named Borsk Vela is the chief of state of the New Republic. He and other members of the government are important in other books and show up in a lot of different places, but all you need to know before you get into the NJO is that there is a government and, for reasons, they are largely skeptical of Jedi and of humans in general, in no small part due to the atrocities brought on the galaxy by the Empire both in the films and afterward. Number 9. Things You Don't Need to Know Now I know I just told you that the political situation was the last thing you needed to know about, but before I wrap up this video I wanted to tell you that there are plenty of things that you don't need to know before you start the NJO. This series takes place in a huge canon of books, many of which are really fun reads about characters we already know and love. However, the series is also self-contained in a lot of ways as well. So when you start into the book and are immediately confronted with things like Mara Jade's mysterious illness, or the sudden appearance of the big villain for the series, the Yuzin Vong, you should know that a lot of this appears for the first time in the series, and you aren't behind and won't be confused if you don't know everything that is happening right from the start. The series does a good job on catching you up on what you need to know when you need to know it. So don't feel like the NJO is inaccessible to you if you've never read any of the Legends canon. Just jump right in and enjoy the ride. And that's it for this video on everything you need to know for the NJO. Stay tuned to Port Haven as we cover this series over the next couple of months and follow along with us if you like. We're starting from the first novel in the series, Vector Prime, and you can read along with us or just follow our discussions as we talk about them. But either way, I hope this has been informational but not too daunting. And as always, I'm Professor Django, just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe.